Today in America, women across the nation practice their right to vote each year. However, the path to voting rights for women took over 70 years, and suffrage was achieved only because of the vision, the dedication, and the sacrifice of many women and men. Women like Susan B. Anthony, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Sojourner Truth, Alice Paul, Ida B. Wells, and Carrie Chapman Catt. Each year, on August 26th, Women's Equality Day, we celebrate the day in 1920 when the 19th Amendment became law, the amendment that granted all women full voting rights. The 19th Amendment states, the right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. We invite you to be our guest to the Sewell Belmont House and Museum in Washington, D.C., one of the premier women's history sites in the country. It houses an extensive collection of suffrage banners and artifacts documenting the effort to win voting rights and equality for all women under the law. That with our ingenuity, creativity, and innovative spirit, there are no limits to what is possible in America. So we are on our way to the Sewell Belmont House to meet with Alita Black. She's going to tell us about the 90th anniversary of women's suffrage. Alita! Hey, Liz. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Happy birthday. Happy suffrage birthday. Yes. Welcome to the Sewell Belmont House. Tell us about it. You see all these bricks? You see how dated they are? Ironically, these bricks were from the jail that housed the women when they were arrested in front of the White House. They are Occoquan bricks from the Occoquan jail. Okay. Come on, Liz, let's go up the front step. We'll do it. Let's talk more. Okay, we're on the steps of the Sewell Belmont House, which is a national treasure, a national historic landmark, which is the home of the most precious collection of women's rights material and women's suffrage material in the United States. It has an archive that's beyond compare, 3,000 lobby cards, all carefully handwritten in ink, photographs, banners, campaign buttons, art, sculpture, it's all here. And what a perfect way to honor Women's Equality Day than to honor the women who risked their lives, their fortune, their honor, and their families so that we today can vote. So welcome to the Sewell Belmont House and happy Women's Equality Day. The Sewell Belmont House is, uh, today, is a preservation organization. We're dedicated to telling the story of the National Women's Party and preserving our historic and outstanding suffrage collection for all of the world. Uh, our goal is to make this information as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. We want to share the story of the National Women's Party worldwide. Now this is a totally cool mallet. And you will see here that it has all of these signatures on it. And this chaired the first meeting of the Women's Congressional Union. And they, gap, they used this gavel to call the national campaign to order when women came to Washington to take on the Hill so that women could get the right to vote. So this is a totally cool hammer. You could actually say that this hammer led the fight for the largest expansion of democracy in the history of the United States. So we go from gaveling to building. And this trowel was given to the National Women's Party by Charlotte L. Pierce in 1923. And here we have the printing blocks. 
and if you look at it backwards, you can see that it says the suffragist. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you the newspapers that this printing block was used to create. But here you have a book that belonged to Susan B. Anthony, and it has Susan B. Anthony's signature in it right here. Susan B. Anthony, Rochester, February 26, 1878. Here we are entering the Virginia Room. The passage of the 19th Amendment, which was inscribed into the United States Constitution on August 26, 1920, was the greatest expansion of our democracy on one single day in American history. Now that's something to celebrate, but it's also a powerful reminder of how hard we need to work to make important things happen. After all, it was more than 70 years when American women and men went out and worked for suffrage. They went door to door, they collected petitions, they held rallies, they marched, and sometimes they lobbied legislatures and went and campaigned in referenda. When they held those initiatives and they lost, and sometimes they lost, they went back the next day and started again. In 1915, the vote for suffrage lost in New York State. And when Carrie Chapman Catt was asked what she was going to do, she said, why, more votes were cast for suffrage today than ever before. We've just begun. I know we can win next time. And they started organizing, and by 1917, they won. And that's the message for all of us, that this vote, which sometimes we're in danger of taking for granted, this vote was so hard fought and so much worth winning. Let's vow that we'll never take it for granted again. Not for us, the fortunate women of the United States, not for us, women around the world, who have the opportunity to vote today. And let's not forget those women and girls in countries where they don't have these rights and opportunities. And let's keep working and supporting them until they do. Happy, Happy Women's, Women's Equality, Equality Day. Day! And don't forget to vote.